I'm really excited to introduce, I thought Ms. Ramirez would be here too. Is she, she will, okay. Okay, um, Dr. Rachel Abel, who's going to be talking about our multilingual learner supports as well as our BPAC committee. Dr. Abel, spotlight is on you. Ooh. Well, um, I'm just here spotlighting the great work of a, a great team. Um, as you know, all of this work and supports and anytime we're able to highlight the great work that's doing at Lake Forest, that's going on at Lake Forest High School, it's never the product of one person. Um, and so I have to give a lot of gratitude and I'm going to be sending a lot of good gobbles out to a lot of great people that I get to work with every single day. Um, so in terms of our multilingual learner supports and family engagement, that's what I get to spotlight to uh, tonight. Um, those are just a few of our student groups that um, have supports throughout their day, but I definitely want to ensure that we um, also are intentional about our supports, our resources that we're using, and recognizing the unique strengths that every single one of those students that appear up there bring to the table because they are multilingual and they are multicultural, um, which in today's world is amazing and it's a talent and a strength that brings to our community every day. Um, some of the guidance that we've had in our programming and supports, but also our BPAC. We love acronyms and lots of different ones in education, so that's a new one maybe to the board. Um, but a lot of that guidance is um, alongside with ISBE, and also um, there are lots of books that are created and published just for school boards, also for BPACs to make sure that we are following the guidelines of ISBE. Um, so if you would be interested in it, I can share some of that information with you. Um, so this is our program and support specifically for our multilingual learners. Um, we have language acquisition classes. We have three levels um, throughout the day at Lake Forest High School. We have an ELL workshop, which is for um, students who uh, maybe just need a resource period, just get some light support and a home base. Um, we also talk not just about academics, but that social emotional wellness. Um, we are also including Spanish for native speakers, um, which is uh, probably about five years in the making that we've had that course, but it provides really important bilingual support because as we know, when language acquisition happens and you have the bilingual support, um, that linguistic approach is much more favored than what was favored perhaps when I went to school, which is do one language and not the other. And that is incredibly damaging and completely erases um, a linguistic talent that a ta uh, family and a student brings to the table. Um, and we are going to transition that uh, after our course uh, communication and uh, committee talks a little bit more about aligning it with the Spanish language arts, which is a, new, a newer um, alignment with the Spanish language standards that Illinois has adopted. Um, these are just a few of the incredible teammates that I get to work and serve with every day. So Shannon Ramirez, who helps support uh, everything that we're doing with our students and our families. Um, Kristen Gregory, Brittany Tengler is uh, one of our counselors who is bilingual, supporting our families. Um, Sandra Tinoco, who also teaches Spanish for native speakers and is often at our BPAC meetings and supporting our families. And our newest member is Alina de Garcia Escobar, who is a teaching assistant, and we've been so blessed to hire her. Um, she is bilingual and has also been a classroom teacher and is getting her bilingual certification. She is pushing in to provide Spanish language support um, into some of the core content areas in our building. Um, so she gets to work alongside some of our teachers. Um, this is just some quick data, because I'm sure you've looked at a lot of data lately, but this is really uplifting data to celebrate. Um, the number one stands for when I came into Lake Forest High School and I was honored to uh, be able to work in the district was the number of students that we are serving under the umbrella of multilingual learner support. So we had one student nine years ago. Um, we pushed that out a little bit further as we realized we needed a classroom. So then we had one class and we had one teacher. And now you just saw in the previous slide all of the amazing supports that we have um, throughout the hard work that all of that team has put together. Our three is actually a point three. So we talked a little bit about growth in other areas. We had point three growth in the access test. 
Um, access is the test that every English language learner takes in the state of Illinois annual. Um, and it stands for assessing comprehension and communication in English. So they take it in reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Um, it's a pretty intense test and it's very demanding. So our students grew 0.3. The approximate growth is 0.2. So our students exceeded that in the state of Illinois. Um, and that was with what we just experienced the lack, last couple of years. So pretty amazing growth with our students. Um, and 100 is one of the most excellent, excellent data points that we can celebrate here at Lake Forest High School. That is the percentage of our students that graduate um, after receiving supports, either exiting or continuing those supports throughout their four years here. And we get them onto their next pathway, whether it is career um, or it is higher education. So um, we, we get to report that out to the state every, every year and it's something to celebrate within the work that our team has done. Lastly, uh, our BPAC, which again stands for our Bilingual Parent Advisory Council. Um, we meet four to five times per year. It is for our bilingual families and we do present information in Spanish. Um, it is also available in English. We present data, so just all of that data, growth, how students are doing, we have to present that same data to our families because they have to provide us feedback and input and in how we can make this school better for their family um, and ensure that their students are growing and learning alongside all of their peers. Um, it's incredibly um, uplifting to attend uh, and be a part of it, again, with a big team. It is about building relationships, celebrating, and of course, building community. Um, we have our next one next Thursday, or this Thursday, excuse me, November 3rd, and we have a theme every, every time. Um, our meeting will be about uh, future career pathways. We'll have somebody from the College Bound Opportunities representing um, and being able to present to our families. Um, it's, it's wonderful, and I'm so thrilled that I get to tell all of you about it, so thank you. Um, and just quickly to note, um, our family languages that are currently supported just within our multilingual learner supports include French, Spanish, Vietnamese, Russian, Ukrainian, am I forgetting one, Japanese and Polish. Um, and that is, those are just a few of the 38 languages that are spoken at our homes in this community. So I wanted to celebrate that. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you, of course, to all the team that supports our students. So, Rachel, yep. with BPAC, you said we have 38 different languages spoken in homes in our community. So, are you getting good attendance from the families um, across the spectrum of, of languages, or are we targeting primarily Spanish? The BPAC is targeted primarily Spanish language because we provide bilingual support in Spanish in the school. And so that is a requirement that we have from the state of Illinois in order to have those parent meetings. We started building it last year because we were anticipating that we were really going to need to provide a robust um, meeting support, uh, working alongside and collaborating with n a number of members of our team um, and bringing other people in so that we could make sure that we were providing the correct information to our parents. Um, other information is always included um, to parents in their home language. That is a requirement that we have to provide. Um, so that is just a small portion of our bilingual parents, but that one is specifically in Spanish. Okay. So thank you very much. I had a similar question. So are you, are you planning to extend that to to other languages like French or Russian or whatever the predominant second most spoken languages? Um, we, we absolutely will be extending a little bit more of that family outreach because that's, that's typically what, um, what we're finding is very um, successful is when we are calling home and we have somebody who can speak the home language and inviting our families in. Um, it's not just a quick email, although that's easy. Google Translate has made things a lot easier. Um, also that phone call and having that language being spoken is extremely powerful. Dr. Abel, could I do something that's totally unfair? Um, you presented a slide uh, to the Ed Committee this morning. Oh, okay. 
and that would be way beyond my technological capabilities. But I don't know if you could pull it up, the slide with the One Lake Forest um, centered around the work that um, is going on within the school. So I, if you have the slide, but, but maybe to speak to um, I, when we started our work uh, in the Ed Committee on One Lake Forest, it resided in the Ed Committee, and the key for that process was for it to be a living document that really embedded itself in the school. And Dr. Schaubacher's comments today were we're so thoughtful and, and speak to how we all feel. But I, I think it's important that w we recognize that One Lake Forest really is now embedded within the school community and the work, some of the work that you're doing that you spoke to this morning, I think it's, it's timely. And if, and if you can maybe highlight a couple of the, the, the a little bit of that work too, and I, and I apologize for putting you on the spot here because that's a little beyond the scope, but but it really it 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 was so thoughtful this morning. So if you don't mind, please. Um, I did it through Canva, so I can't just share it. You can so plug I in. Can, to I can plug yeah. in, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Airplay it. Yeah, airplay it. And this really is a tremendous graphic that came from Dr. Abel's um, brain, just around all of the fantastic work that's happening at Lake Forest High School. So now I'm just filling time while I'm waiting on you to. Okay. So it said I already have. So again, this is not, uh, this, now it's public, but um, it was in my head living there. Um, as we, we continue to discuss all the work that's, the great work that's being done in our district and just highlighting, um, you know, how they all fit together, because that's really important. We can't just continue to say, we're doing this, we're doing that, but how did it all connect? And really the One Lake Forest um, vision and statement and the work that we're doing is woven throughout every other aspect that we are talking about, whether it's Portrait of a Learner, our SEL committee, we're talking about our multi-tier system of support, we're talking about our school innovation um, and improvement plan. A lot of the elements that are coming out, and I don't know if we're calling them tenants or elements, but responsibility, engagement, and partnership are coming out of all of these groups, and that's exactly what's in the One Lake Forest statement. Um, so I thought that was very um, interesting that it's all aligning, and this is what made sense to me in really making sure that we're centering the One Lake Forest statement with whatever decision we're making. If we're talking about changing a system, um, then how are we doing that, and with what intention, and how are we grounding ourselves? So I think that's very important to always bring us back to that, and I know Dr. Lenart will do that and in our guidance, but um, some things that I spoke about this morning, um, quickly, we're just talking about some of the department work, reviewing curriculum, um, thinking about perspectives that are shared, and making sure that there are a wide variety of celebrations honoring of those perspectives and voices. Um, that, that has been done in a lot of different spaces. I know um, in English department, for example, they've re-examined everything that's in the English one and English two and thinking about very intentional um, work within their curriculum. Thank you so much. So much more eloquent than me, so thank you for presenting that. And it's a, it's a great image too, so thanks again for all your time and thoughts. Thank you. I love that it's all about partnership too, and that's who you are. That's who you are with the leadership team and with the students and with the departments you lead. That's what BPAC is about, is bringing more stakeholders into the room, inviting them to the table and the conversation, giving them a seat at the table. And that's who you are, Dr. Abel, and we appreciate you for that. So thank you.
but also celebrating our team, yes? <laughs> uh, yes, and also celebrating the team, absolutely.